Uh, I'm going to talk about AI and blockchain uh, and give some real world examples of how these two technologies are converging. I want to stress, though, that we're still really early in this. Um, it, we're in really the mess around, find out phase. Uh, so these are experimentations, more or less, but some of these are actual real products that are hitting the market. Um, but yeah, before, before I jump in, I need to reprogram your brains because you probably have some misconceptions about blockchain, uh, and I want to correct those. Uh, I've noticed at this conference, uh, blockchain has been kind of a little bit of a whipping boy uh, at some of the talks. Uh, I didn't take down names, but I, I did hear a few of the comments. Um, and so I want to dispel some of uh, the misconceptions. First, I want you to understand blockchain technology is simply a novel way to get two or more computers to agree on something in a trustless manner. That's essentially what it does. So Bitcoin is a uh, software that gets every computer on the Bitcoin network to agree on a ledger, a series of transactions in a trustless manner. There is no central authority in Bitcoin. Uh, there's nobody who tells those computers what that ledger should say. It's, uh, that's, that's the beauty of blockchain. Crypto is another term. That's almost has become kind of a dirty word uh, lately. And I want to kind of correct a little bit of the understanding on that. So uh, crypto is the root word of cryptography. Cryptography is the uh, heart of cryptocurrencies. Um, I work for the Definity Foundation. We are a major contributor to the Internet Computer Protocol, which is a blockchain uh, protocol. We are one of, if not the largest, we are one of the largest employers of cryptographers in the world uh, outside of government agencies. So when I say crypto is cryptography, I really truly mean it. Now let me talk about the Internet Computer Protocol. So um, I mentioned Affinity is a major contributor to it. It's one of the most advanced blockchains out there. It essentially is a decentralized cloud. It allows you to host 100% of an application on the blockchain. Um, that's front end, back end, data. You can host everything on the blockchain, um, on the internet computer. And uh, so perhaps an easy way to understand that is if Bitcoin is, let's say like an analogy would be Bitcoin is a competitor to um, the US dollar or a fiat currency, the internet computer protocol is a competitor to AWS or Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. Right? So it's a decentralized cloud platform. And you may rightfully ask yourself, why would we possibly need a blockchain-based cloud hosting provider? Uh, we have AWS. It's great. It does everything I need it to do. Well, blockchain in general, the internet computer in specific, has three main competitive advantages to a centralized cloud hosting platform like AWS. And I, shouldn't, I shouldn't pick on AWS. I know they're here uh, as well. So I'll pick on Google Cloud. Uh, we have competitive advantage against uh, Google Cloud in three ways. Uh, first is security. I was just mentioning that, uh, secure, uh, that um, cryptography is the root of cryptocurrency, of crypto. And what really how that plays out is enhanced security. So on the Internet Computer Protocol, there's uh, uh, security is a native feature at both the network level. You will never hear about a firewall on the Internet Computer because there's no need for firewalls. It's natively secure, uh, as well as at the personal level. So protecting a person or a company's uh, data, their identity, um, it's uh, impossible to track users across applications on the internet computer. And um, it's a lot easier to secure your data and ensure that your data doesn't leak out. A um, little fun antidote. I actually got into the Internet Computer Protocol in 2021. Uh, I spent 2020 and 2021 working uh, for a vaccine company. We had a COVID vaccine. We got um, a $1.6 billion grant from Operation Warp Speed. Part of that grant was that we had to increase our cybersecurity because COVID vaccines at the time were considered a uh, national security risk. And I tangentially was involved in that increase in cybersecurity. I learned firsthand in that experience how insecure the internet is by design. I'm telling you, your digital assets, all your AI assets, you, there is not enough money, there is not enough expertise to guarantee security of those assets. That's just uh, how the internet works. Um, so that got me into the Internet Computer Protocol. Okay, so security is a big competitive advantage of ICP, of the Internet Computer Protocol. In addition to that, there's digital ownership. Blockchains are really good at taking digital assets and assigning ownership, 
allowing that ownership to be transacted upon uh, in a frictionless manner, um, what we call a smart contract, which is defined, predefined um, transaction terms or licensing terms, as well as um, allowing control over those digital assets, uh, uh, um, uh, decentralized control, so multiple parties having control over the digital asset. That's, a, um, that's the story of NFTs. NFTs are just digital assets, pictures, uh, images, that um, the uh, blockchain facilitates the transactions of. And then third is decentralization. Uh, you've probably picked up on that decentralization is a big thing in blockchain. Um, in AI, actually here, actually this is an interesting way to think about decentralization. It's hard to convince people of the importance of decentralization. Uh, and one of the ways I found is, I want you to think for a second about the fact that, I'm guessing for most of you, the majority of your wealth lives as data on somebody else's server. There's an implicit trust assumption you have with your bank, with your stockbroker, um, with their, those IT departments. Uh, decentralization is all about destroying those trust relationships and instead having a trustless system. If you remember my definition of a blockchain, it's getting two or more computers to agree on something in a trustless manner. That's decentralization. For you guys here, you're into AI. Uh, and AI, I think decentralization brings transparency. That's something that's severely lacking right now. I've heard it in a bunch of talks this week. Uh, you know, consumers tend to think of AI as a black box. And one way we can solve that is actually by decentralizing control of our AI models. Uh, that actually is a good segue into my first use case. Uh, at the Definity Foundation, we're exploring how to use, uh, um, uh, how to put a AI model or a component of an AI model uh, onto the blockchain and then allow democratic control of that. AI, or all the components that make up AI, are just digital assets. As I said, a blockchain is great for digital, uh, for digital ownership of digital assets. And so you can actually put an AI model on the blockchain, on the internet computer, and have a democratic body um, fully control that code. It's a really cool um, use case. We're exploring this as a solution to the alignment issue, right, or alignment problem, right? How do you get AI to align to uh, human values? Um, our natural question is, whose human values are we aligning it to? Uh, and a democratic uh, body would be the best way to solve that question, in, in, in our opinion. For you guys, you're probably, your companies probably didn't so send you here to solve the alignment problem, so what would the application be? Well, in your AI development and deployment, you have a lot of partners, I'm assuming, right? And uh, whoever controls the code controls the AI. So if you have a lot of stakeholders in your AI uh, development or deployment, um, whoever's controlling that code probably has a lot more of a leverage over top of the partnership. Democratic control could be just a few partners, a few people who now are controlling the code, leveraging out the, um, or, or evening out the leverage within the partnership. It removes that trust aspect. Um, let's talk about marketplaces. Um, there is a company called the stage.ai. Uh, they're building on the internet computer. They're building a marketplace where you can buy and sell pre-trained AI models. Um, really cool platform. They're using, again, the blockchain for that uh, smart contract aspect where they can embed the licensing terms into the, um, into the digital asset itself so that the transactions are, are frictionless. There's also a team uh, looking into putting AI data, data sets intended for AI model building onto the blockchain. Exact same thing, embedding, embedding the licensing agreement of those data sets such that a model builder, when they license the data, they uh, um, not only can frictionlessly pay for the royalty of using the data set, but also receive a, uh, within the blockchain a certification that shows that they ethically sourced their data set. I think that's uh, um, something that Again, going back to that transparency, a lot of data is just being scraped off the internet. There's a whole question of how do you, um, how do you ethically source? How do you prove that a, uh, um, a team ethically sourced their data? That might be one solution to it. There is um, also a cool aspect that they're looking at uh, where um, not only is it where a data owner could sell or, or license out their data, but how do you then invite an entire ecosystem of players, right? So, 
so this could be uh, somebody who comes in and cleans a data set, or somebody who contextualizes it, somebody who adds business knowledge to it, somebody who combines it with other data sets. Transact that enriched data set for perhaps a higher value, and then have it so that those royalties are distributed to all those stakeholders, again, in an automated, autonomous fashion. Really kind of cool stuff. Um, there's a team, uh, you know, I'm afraid to ask how many of you guys are relying on APIs, uh, third-party APIs in your AI development. Uh, there's a team exploring how to make unstoppable APIs on the internet computer. Obviously, the application there would be if you got in bed in one of these third-party APIs and they revoked your access, you know, what would be the consequences of that? Well, let's create APIs that cannot be revoked. Uh, Zynga, uh, uh, their relationship with Facebook is one of the best use cases of this. Uh, Facebook revoked their API access back in I don't know, 2016, and Zynga lost you know, a billion dollars in market value that day. Uh, so that's a great example of, again, something possible on the blockchain is having these unstoppable APIs, and there's a team kind of exploring how do we actually create a consumer product around that. Uh, so we talked about uh, governance, uh, democratic governance of AI models. We talked about marketplaces for buying and selling components into AI models. Let's talk about decentralized apps. So again, code is just a digital asset. That's all it is. And like I said on the blockchain, uh, we can have full control of any digital asset. You can assign full control of that. The internet comp computer protocol itself operates that way where um, the, there is a governing DAO, a democratic body that anyone can join in the world. Uh, all code updates to the protocol need to go through that DAO. Uh, there's, a, there's apps that are being deployed called decentralized apps where just like open source, it's a project that uh, has now released their code into where anyone can become part of the governing body and fully control and own that application. Typically, you do that um, and you provide the way to, to become part of the governing body by using the application. So what you have then is an app that is owned and controlled by its users. Uh, there's a few examples of that. One is Kinnick, K-I-N-I-C. It's a search engine on the internet computer, um, fully owned and controlled by uh, that democratic body. Uh, and some of these apps are exploring how do we embed AI into our offering? And I want you to think about that. You now have, when they do this, when they deploy an AI as part of their application, you now then would have a governing body that is both controlling the inputs, the code, the process, uh, any kind of output boundaries from that AI model, and also being the ones to consume it, right? So the consumers of the AI model are also the ones who have full control of how the AI model was built and deployed. Uh, if there was reinforced learning, uh, through human feedback, I presume that they would also be the ones providing that human feedback. And uh, I've heard a couple talks today about responsible AI. I just want to say AI where the consumers have a stake in the development and deployment uh, is about as high of a transparent AI as you can get. That's the high bar right there. That's what you should be aiming for is where you can actually invite uh, your consumers to actually have some sort of control over uh, the AI model that you're developing. Uh, this is actually all done through a liquid democracy system, so there's an efficiency gain there. There's a, um, a consolidation of expertise, typically that happens through the liquid democracy system. So if you're a voter, maybe you don't understand AI, you understand the search engine side of things, you may um, uh, give your vote to somebody who you believe is actually an expert and, and is leading in a, in a specific way. Um, now there's a, fourth, there's a fourth use case I want to talk about. This is, nobody's actually building this, um, so this is free for any of you guys to take and run with it. It's just a product I want out there that's possible. Um, I think it could be a billion dollar idea. Feel free to run with it. If you start a company and you make a billion dollars, I just want you to remember the name Kyle Langham. I want you to know I got my eye on a uh, soft top Jeep Wrangler. If you wanted to kind of pay it forward, that would be an awesome gift. So. Um, Again, going back to the idea that blockchain in general, internet computers specifically, are natively secure. Uh, you can store personal data for yourself or for your company on the internet computer in a secure manner that's not possible, either on a centralized cloud or, or just uh, um, on your own server hosted on the internet, you know, put on the internet. And what you can do with that then is you could actually have a digital vault for every single person, every single company, 
in which private and personal confidential data goes into that vault and access to that vault can be controlled through a set of private keys only the vault owner has, right? At that point now, you, you essentially, you're, you're GDPR compliant, you're HIPAA compliant, you're giving uh, full control over the data to uh, the individual or the company. In addition to that, now you also have AI model builders who are interested in aggregating that kind of data. Let's take the human genome, right? There is a lot of value to any company or research firm that can aggregate genomes from a huge, large population. And so how do you do that in a trustless manner? Well, again, that's coming back to the internet computer. So you could have a system where each individual person has their private data in a digital vault. They then uh, um, control who accesses that vault. In addition to that, uh, so now you can now aggregate personal data in a, in a trustless and controlled manner. In addition to that, you um, could use what's called zero knowledge proofs. If you were here yesterday uh, and you attended the talk by Kathleen uh, Rin uh, from JP Morgan, she talked about ZK proofs, um, zero knowledge proofs. It's the idea that, uh, um, and blockchain's the only technology that has enabled this yet. It's the idea that you can um, uh, have a data set and you can reveal a fact about that data set without revealing the underlying data. It's really kind of cool technology, and again, in the case of uh, the genome, you could ask whether or not a patient has a specific uh, sequence within that genome without actually revealing the genome itself. Um, again, uh, adding to the trans uh, to the um, uh, the security aspect of us owning our own personal data. So feel free to take that and run with it. I recognize most of you guys are going back to your businesses. Um, if any of those thing those th uh, three things, uh, security, digital ownership. Um, decentralization or transparency. If any of those are important to the products you're building, I recommend looking at building on the internet computer. If you want to, you can scan that QR code. It's on your right. Uh, that'll take you to a landing page to give you information about the internet computer and how enterprises can build on it. If you'd like to scan that uh, QR code on the left, that'll connect you with me on Telegram. I'd be happy to set up uh, some time with you, talk through uh, you know, any kind of ideas. I love this part. This is the best part of my job is talking to people about um, ways in which blockchain can actually solve real world problems. And um, also, if you want, you can just connect with me at the uh, drinks reception. Uh, drinks are on me, so um, <laughs> enjoy. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time and, and safe travels back home. <laughs>